Thank you very much, Heather, and good morning, and thank you for the invitation to come along here and speak at STEM Live. I bet this is the first ever event you've had to attend where you've had to build your own seats. Had you been here a little bit earlier, you'd have seen us building our seats just before you arrived. But actually, I did. Of course, I did build my own seat as well. So I'm going to take us back to Parliament and sit on it this afternoon and tweet about how I was at STEM Live uh, this morning. So it's good to see some STEM in action uh, at the beginning of today's uh, session. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased to be here. And of course, I'm told this is the first time at the Scottish Learning Festival that we've got this show and tell approach that's being adopted uh, for any topic. And of course, we're particularly pleased today that the focus is on STEM. So I'm sure you're going to have a very inspirational day, an exciting day, and challenging day, and hopefully a fun day uh, as well. It was a real privilege for me, personally, to be asked to rejoin the Scottish Government just a few weeks ago, indeed just two weeks ago, and to be appointed uh, Scotland's new Minister for Further Education, Higher Education and Science. And it's very important for me to be appointed this uh, very important role at such uh, an interesting time with such an ambitious agenda for science, technology, engineering and maths in Scotland. So I'm doing my best in the last two weeks to get to grips with the STEM agenda and what it actually means in reality so we can move beyond the acronym that we all talk about and understand why it's so important for all of us in our society. And of course, Heather just said before I spoke that make sure your mobile phones are all switched off. And we should talk about the mobile phone. It's perhaps a really good example of the importance of science and technology. It's incredible to think that only back in 1983, we had the first mobile phone that came in the market and it weighed 24 pounds. You only had uh, 30 minutes of talk time. It took 10 hours to charge. And of course, incredibly, it cost 10,000 US dollars to buy, which is 7,600 pounds in our cash today. And things have moved on exponentially since then. And we need to ensure that our country and our people are equipped to embrace ongoing rapid technological change. Innovation in the areas of science and engineering is a strong part of Scotland's heritage, as hopefully we are all, we are all aware of. From Baird and the television and Baird, uh, to Bell with the telephone, right through to the recent achievements of Professor Peter Higgs and the subatomic particles, we really have much to celebrate as a country and to inspire us for the future as well. However, in order to continue to build on this heritage and to increase productivity and economic growth, we need to ensure the supply of relevant scientific and technological skills are there in the workforce. As we continue to see growth in industries ranging from digital technologies to renewable energy, as well as the other industries in the wider economy, we absolutely need to take action to address these critical skills gaps. And alongside this economic necessity, we have to ensure it's not seen as something that only the most academically able people are able to undertake. We have to ensure that STEM is seen as something for everyone. STEM should give us the confidence to understand and engage with society's big issues and help us develop skills which can be used in a wide range of, of situations and careers. And STEM helps us to live in our ever-changing world, link with others, keep us safe and, safe and healthy, and indeed just run our lives, getting back to the mobile phone. We must ensure that all our children and young people have both a grounding in STEM, but also opportunities to progress and develop the most special skills which our STEM employers are looking for these days. Of course, our schools, our, our schools approach to STEM learning has come a long way from the science department. I can remember when I was at school, I can remember the Bunsen burger, uh, burner and the periodical table. That's really all I can remember about science at school. Uh, and although, although, of course, these are still very essential uh, for science, experimentation and inquiry today, learning is now increasingly placed in the context of real life science and engineering, building the links across all the disciplines and making full use of digital technology at the same time. So to support this agenda, last October, the Scottish Government published our STEM strategy. It's an ambitious and comprehensive plan to drive forward improvements in STEM right across the education and training landscapes. It's got a five year lifespan and we will report to Parliament on progress uh, of the first year by December. The strategy sets out a programme of actions being delivered in partnership under four key themes. 
Firstly, building capacity with the system to deliver excellent STEM learning. Then, closing equity gaps in STEM participation and attainment. And helping inspire people to study STEM. And finally, building a stronger connection between STEM education and training and the needs of the labour market in Scotland. We are already making progress with some of the key actions that are very relevant to all of you in this room today. For instance, having the right number of teachers with the right skills is vital for ensuring that all young people get an excellent STEM education. We know there have been challenges in the recruitment of STEM subject teachers at school. And through our strategy, we therefore introduced a bursary scheme to encourage more career changers into STEM teaching. The scheme aims to provide 100 bursaries of £20,000 to ease the financial transition for career changers, leaving paid employment to undertake a year of training uh, for the STEM subjects, where we have a great demand for teachers. And I am pleased to say that the scheme has been very successful this year, with 101 bursaries already approved to date. The strategy also sets out commitments to supporting existing teachers and early years and community learning and development practitioners to deliver STEM learning. As part of this, Education Scotland are developing a new online one-stop shop for STEM professional development, directing practitioners to relevant learning materials and offering support on STEM learning pathways. Education Scotland will also introduce a new grant scheme in the autumn to scale up existing professional learning programmes within local authorities and schools and to enable the development of innovative new approaches. A recruitment exercise for six new regional STEM education advisors is underway at Education Scotland now, with a new team expected to be in post by December. These new posts play a key role in leading professional learning and collaboration in STEM within the new regional improvement collaboratives. And another key area of action is closing equity gaps in STEM participation and attainment. For instance, we are particularly keen to face up to the challenges post, posed by gender imbalance in STEM. And this also needs to happen beyond our schools. It has to happen at colleges, universities, and apprenticeships as well. And to help address this, Education Scotland are currently recruiting a team of six improving gender balance and equalities officers, whose task will be to support schools in ensuring that STEM subjects are truly open to all young people. They will embed gender balance approaches in all school clusters by 2022. And building on this need for inclusion, our STEM strategy notes the importance of having a diverse range of pathways for young people to get into STEM. And this includes a commitment to expanding STEM opportunities across all apprenticeships. And I particularly want to highlight foundation apprenticeships, a new option for young people in their senior phase, designed and developed in partnership with Skills Development Scotland, Industry and the SQA. Foundation apprenticeships provide a new opportunity for young people to undertake accredited work-based learning qualifications alongside other course choices as part of their senior phase. They are the same level of learning as a higher and SCQF level six and offer a range of progression routes on completion. Growing foundation apprenticeships in Scotland is not only at the heart of our youth employment strategy, developing the young workforce, but also a key foundation for our ambitions to enhance the learner journey and embed STEM in our education and skills system. The majority of foundation apprenticeships will be in STEM related fields. So I really strongly encourage all schools please take this back to your schools, to consider foundation apprenticeships as a valuable work-based part of the school curriculum. And finally, I want to turn to another key commitment in the strategy, the establishment of a new Young STEM Leaders Programme, which I am pleased to launch in this The Year of Young People. Inspiring young people to take up STEM subjects and careers is vitally important if we are to bring about changes in attitudes, cultures, and perceptions of STEM. As you will see when you hear from the three people I'm sharing this platform with today, very often young people themselves are the best role models for STEM for each other. So we want to strengthen mentoring in STEM for children and young people by children and young people. 
There are a range of mentoring and support programs already operating in schools, both formally and informally. We don't want to replace those, but we want to capitalise on them and provide enhanced support for their development and to broaden the reach of activity across the whole of the country. So I'm very pleased to announce that the Scottish Schools Education Research Centre will lead on the development and delivery of this new programme. They will do this in close partnership with the science centres and festivals and youth organisations, including Young Scott. The programme will enable young STEM leaders in both schools and community learning settings to develop their leadership, mentoring and STEM skills through working with younger counterparts. So there will be training for the young people involved to enable them to be effective STEM mentors. There will be development of both non-formal and formal accreditation routes to ensure participation is valued and recognised. And there will be access to STEM experts or professionals and other sources of support for those involved in the programme. The development of the programme will start next month with an initial consultation and piloting phase and you will then see these new opportunities becoming available for the young people that you work with later in the academic year. And by 2022, aligning with the lifespan of the STEM strategy, our ambition is that all school and community clusters will be participating in the programme. So there's just some issues for you to think about and hopefully take back to your, your schools and colleges and workplaces and wherever you're representing today. It's been really good for me to have this opportunity to say a few words and address you at this uh, exciting event today in my new ministerial capacity. I hope you uh, agree with me that the government has set out a clear and ambitious agenda for STEM education and I am keen to take up the challenge of progressing the strategy and our commitments and delivering real change as we move forward in the months and years ahead. Strong partnership working will remain vital as implementation of the strategy continues. So I very much look forward to working with all of you and your counterparts and your peers right across Scotland in all our settings and all our communities to take forward this agenda, this very important agenda for Scotland's future and to achieve our aims at the same time. So thank you very much and enjoy today. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Lockhead. We appreciate you, uh, you being here this morning and indeed staying to hear our, our next three presentations, which, as you said, uh, in the year of, the, of young people, appropriately come from three younger people who have all had fantastic and interesting STEM journeys to share with us so far. And we're going to start with S1 and invite a, a student from Mearns Castle High School in East Renfrewshire to share her journey with us, and that's Ruby Kent. Ruby, over to you. Good morning. My name is Ruby Kent, and I'm an S1 pupil at Mearns Castle High School. I previously attended Mearns Primary School and it is my STEM journey through primary school and my hopes for the future that I want to share with you today. I don't remember much about primary one, but I do have great memories of blowing bubbles in science, experimenting with different shaped blowers and different bubble solutions and observing the bubbles as they produced. This is my first memory of being encouraged to ask questions in science context. Why, how, what if? I wasn't an avid scientist through the next three, three, three few years of primary school, although I still enjoyed a lot of the science we did. A lot of the time it seemed to me to be watching videos, researching things and writing down facts. That all changed when I got into primary six and I had a teacher whose passion for science was infectious. I was doing practical science that really sparked my curiosity, imagination and interest. It wasn't just the practical science though, it was the whole classroom ethos that was created. We were immersed in STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths. Everything we did was related to science and technology in some way. Maths was taught through various science and engineering contexts. Non-fiction reading and writing often had science and environmental contexts. We had debated STEM issues connected to health and well-being and the environment, linked to, art, linked to art to science and music and maths, and learned all about the science and maths and music. 
We learnt all about Scottish scientists, engineers and inventors and their contributions to the development of technologies, medicines and science that we all take for granted today. We research contemporary Scottish scientists and the important research work they are involved in today and we studied futurology and tried predicting what the technology of the future might look like. A highlight of the year was the PSEX Technology Day, where we worked to design, test, modify, and launch our Mars egg landers, having the opportunity to link our scientific knowledge about forces and air resistance with the technology skills we had been developing and the collaborative skills we worked on all throughout the year, all within an exciting real life context was something I will never forget. Primary six was my science spark, the enjoyment when science was on the timetable, the excitement of practical science, discussions about topical science in the news and the freedom and encouragement to ask questions about anything. It's never too late to be bitten by the science bug. I was so inspired by the experiences that I had in primary seven I applied to be a school lab technician. After completing an application form and a nerve-wracking interview, I was appointed as one of the 12 lab technicians, which was a newly created role in our school. I also signed up for Science Club, which I would never have previously considered, and it was the practical science that inspired me. Making plastic from milk, making ice cream using ice and salt, and experimenting with hydrogels from nappies, and proving that the coke and mentos reaction was physical, not chemical, by dropping stones into bottles of fizzy drinks. The lab technician role was an amazing opportunity to develop my interest in science, as well as my leadership skills. I was involved in running workshops about meteorites and lunar rock samples for pupils throughout the school, demonstrating science to pupils and parents at the STEM showcase evening and supporting teachers in delivering practical science in class. I attended two inspirational smart STEM events at Glasgow Clyde College, where we were given hands-on technology and engineering experiences, such as building and testing a gas safety bypass system, rebuilding a computer, and fitting a floating shelf. We learned practical skills, as well as how to communicate, follow instructions, and work in a team. I was involved in the 2018 Great Science Share where we took part in a series of engineering challenges with pupils from, from, pupils from other schools in the Mairns Castle cluster. Finally, as a lab technician, I had the opportunity to be involved in the selection and interview process for the next generation of lab technicians. I then helped deliver their initial training and shared many of my experiences with them. For me, the most important aspect of my experiences has been the opportunity to develop my organisational and leadership skills, being able to organise my time and complete tasks within a deadline, working with my peers on creative projects and leading learning for younger pupils. I'm not sure what my future holds, whether I will work in a traditional STEM career or not, but there is no doubting that my STEM experiences in primary school have given me a multitude of transferable skills and some knowledge that will benefit me in any career I choose. It has also given me more confidence to critically read que and question scientific findings in the news. I have a greater knowledge of, this, of the range of STEM careers that are available and I have been inspired by visits and visitors to consider a variety of possible STEM careers. I also have an appreciation that the STEM skills I have developed will be useful in whatever I decide to do. The Scottish Government is right to be prioritising STEM subjects in school, as the benefits to students go far beyond just preparing them for work in STEM careers. The transferable skills developed through the science curriculum will equip students with the ability to plan, record, interpret and evaluate in any situation, in any context. For me, the key factors in an engaging STEM 
programme in school are that it is well resourced to deliver practical experiences and that the teacher has the knowledge and confidence and passion to inspire their pupils. These two areas should be pri the priority for the Scottish Government, organisations working with schools and for all schools moving forwards. I was lucky to attend Merrin's Primary School that I had the access to excellent science resources, inspirational opportunities and innovative teaching that not only sparked an interest in my STEM subjects, but allowed me to develop a range of skills for life. My hopes for the future is that all pupils across Scotland get the same access and opportunities to STEM that I had. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that, uh, Ruby. I actually met Ruby when she was a lab technician at Merrin's Primary School, and, uh, and Merrin's Primary will indeed be here showcasing some of the amazing science Ruby was talking about there during our, our next session. Now, our next speaker is an S3 pupil at St Thomas Aquinas School here in Glasgow, so please give a warm welcome to talk about his STEM journey to Ayo Giwa. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Good morning, my name is Ayo Giwa, and I'm very honored to be up here speaking about my STEM experiences. So my journey started at St. Paul's Primary School, where I met a STEM enthusiast of a teacher called Mrs. Sweeney. She loved all things STEM and always encouraged us to do our very best in our learning. She also oversaw a science club in which I joined and participated in the Gopher Set Queen's Ferry Crossing Challenge. In this, we had to make a model of the Queen's Ferry Crossing out of lollipop sticks, cable ties, and string. The aim of the challenge was to see which group's model held the most weight without collapsing. I, I was also involved in a coalition between two primary schools, mine and Scottsdale Primary, for a day of STEM activities. And one of my favorite was the Egg Drop Challenge. I was also involved in the Heather's Huts Challenge, in which we had to design a house that relied 100% on renewable energies, such as wind, solar, and wave. I was also very lucky to go to. I was also very lucky to go to the Primary Engineer Awards. This is the team that went, and I ended up earning a Bronze Crest Award. I also participated in the Science Transition Event at St Thomas Aquinas Secondary School, in which the P7s from the Associated Primary School came up for a day of STEM, and me, being only Primary Seven, was asked to lead a class full of pupils with five different STEM experiments. I then moved into St Thomas Aquinas Secondary School. The school had a very STEM-focused environment and lots of wonderful teachers, like Mr. Hale, who always encouraged us to do our very best in all aspects of STEM. Mr. Hale was also my S1 science teacher. I then participated in the Jacobs Engineering, in the Jacobs Engineering Challenge. In this, we had to come up with a solution to the rising water levels of the Glasgow Harbour site. This is the team that went, and with hard work and perseverance, we managed to win best overall project. As a result of this, we were invited to the International Conference on Climate Change. In this, we had to present our project to an audience of STEM scientists and engineers. It was rather terrifying, yet exhilarating. This is me getting grilled by one of the leading scientists in, in climate change. I also, part in S2, I participated in the Go For Set Sustainability Challenge. In this, our school was placed on Mars and we had to come up with solutions to all the problems such as lack of viable atmosphere, lack of oxygen, and extreme temperatures. I thought we should have won, but we were robbed. <laughs> I still managed to earn a Silver Crest Award, which is one of the highest science, science achievement awards you can get. The, um, the project was supported by Verdor, a waste recycling company, and through them I worked with several STEM ambassadors, but I've worked with STEM ambassadors from all walks of life and at different points in my education, and have all inspired me to love STEM even more. I've been very lucky to have gone to schools with a STEM culture, such as my secondary school, which has science and STEM clubs for S1s to S3s throughout the week, I mean every week. And my STEM learning isn't just limited to inside of school. I also learn outside, of, outside out with school. This is a picture of me at the Science Centre learning about robotic engineering and driverless cars. It's all inspired me to love every aspect of learning about STEM 
and I was awarded the Significant Achievement Award in my, in my secondary school last year. It's inspired me to also pursue a PhD and a career in astrophysics in the future. So what skills have I developed? I've developed my team working skills, as this is a picture of me and the Gopher Set team working on logic gates for our project. This is a picture of me at a head teacher's conference, explaining and defending my opinion. I've also worked, developed my creativity skills. This is a picture of the Echo Projects model of the Glasgow Harbour site. I've developed my presentation skills, firstly preparing for today. And also, this is a picture of me at the ECA International Conference. My numeracy and problem solving skills in a fun, relevant environment. My thinking and analyzing skills. My scientific literacy for report writing. And a really big one for me was leadership, as I've had lots of wonderful opportunities to lead different kinds of STEM groups. So how do I feel about STEM? I love learning in a STEM context. I think, it's, I think STEM is a fun way to share ideas and knowledge with others and teams. It's, STEM is a motivating and it's also ch a challenging way to gain new skills. And it's a great way to meet new and interesting people. In, in my opinion, STEM has no limits and is very rewarding and motivating for young children. So why is STEM important? It's essential for our everyday lives as all jobs have some aspect of STEM incorporated into them. It's a superb context for skill development, me myself being an example, and our future depends on it. Humanity has only gotten this far with, uh, with amazing contributions from the likes of Sir Isaac Newton and Einstein, and if we really focus on it, I think it can take humanity to higher heights. So this is my key message about STEM. STEM makes learning fun, active, and relevant for young children. It also develops awareness of global issues like climate change, and it's an engaging, challenging, exciting, motivational, and it's motivational. And teachers, please, don't pass up the opportunity to teach through STEM. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Ayo, thank you uh, so much for that fantastic presentation. Uh, thank you for mentioning Heather's Hut. <laughs> but I think also you, uh, you showcased really just uh, how many amazing initiatives are out there for schools to get involved in, um, how much partnership working in, in, in STEM is, is, is going on. And St Thomas Aquinas are also going to be here uh, during the next session to show some of that. Um, and I think astrophysics will be very, very lucky to have you. Uh, of course, we're not, not long off the back of uh, tremendous advances in gravitational wave, waves uh, detection, uh, led by Sir James Huff and, and indeed our, our chief scientific advisor, Sheila Rowan. So um, they're going to be knocking on your door, I think, very soon. Thank you very much for that. Um, and then our, our final presentation um, from our younger people today um, really is picking up on one of the themes introduced by the Minister in his presentation and uh, looking at post-school apprenticeships. So I'm delighted to welcome um, Keris Simpkins, who's a post-school apprentice from West Lothian. Keris, over to you. So at school, I wasn't into the science and the maths and everything else like that. I was more hands-on with the technology, so the craft um, and design part. And I'd never thought about STEM or anything else like that. And I didn't ever know what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like my mum, kind of, in primary school teaching. And then I was like, I can't deal with wee kids. <laughs> and then I was like, right, I want to do something hands-on. So be like my dad, a craft technician. And then I was like, can't do with high school kids, not happening. And then one of my teachers after I moved to school at the start of my fifth year, got me into a multi-trade course um, at the start of my sixth year and it changed everything for me. I would go out for every Monday for six weeks with two men from the council and do different jobs in different houses and different situations and get on hands-on experience with what I was doing and what they did as a job. And it really opened my eyes and made me realize there's not enough females out in the trade industry and we need more. I know what I want to do. I'm a Plasha and Apprenticeship Apprentice um, for West Lothian Council. I have been for the past two months now. Um, the experience that I've got so far, I'm further ahead than half of the second years already. 
because the experience that I was given through my school with STEM. Um, Mrs. Kane, my craft technology teacher, gave me the opportunities nobody else had, like would give me and made me believe that I could do whatever I put my mind to. I wasn't into the maths. I couldn't do the maths side. I couldn't do the science side. I don't understand numbers properly. And being able to get hands on and take my mind off everything else I at and be able to put my skills somewhere else, which is useful, changed everything for me. Being a plasterer, a female in the male industry, there is only one lady in the council working um, and she's actually a plumber. And then going to different things and I'm the only female going to different houses and people don't live in them and you can't use a toilet. I need to go take, get taken back to a depot because the guys can do it wherever they want. But because I'm a female, I need change. We need more females into it because it's not just a man's job. All females are just as capable. No matter, like, you can't see at being a female as a limit because it's not. You can't have that boundary. We need more younger, it needs to be advertised more to younger people because I didn't know anything about it until my fifth year with doing the multi-trade course with school. There was a day for the girls into construction. So there was a bunch of girls from my school and my old school um, taken out for a day, shown different trades um, and how it works and how we need more females into it. I keep going on about more females, but it's true because it is seen as a male dominant trade and department, but it shouldn't be. I've went and spoken to other education um, about my multi-trade course with school, and I've actually had females from British Gas and things like that come up and speak to me. It's like, how do we get more females into it? We need to give them the opportunities, because if they don't know the opportunities, they don't know they're there, then nothing's gonna be done about it. So um, I was just out of school this year, so I just finished my sixth year and going in straight to an apprenticeship. So I was like, right, I'm getting paid while I learn. This is brilliant. And it's changed everything for me. It's nothing like school. And even going to college, you get treated like an adult and not a kid. But STEM helps you so much and you get so far. Like teachers need to advertise it more with kids, show them what opportunities they can have from it. Because when I was in primary school, it was never advertised. I thought, oh yeah, we're growing a plant. Yeah, it sits on the windowsill for a week and then it dies. But coming up to the high school and then I thought it was all like English and maths and science. And I, my brain just, I couldn't focus in those subjects. And then I'd go into the craft department and it was all there everything I could ever want and it used to be like a wee machine just going at it constantly and spending my lunch times up there. Um, my fifth and sixth year I spent helping the first and second years because I like showing and helping out other people, younger people, showing them what they can do and what they can put their minds to if they really try. With the, the apprenticeship it helps everyone. People say, like construction, the f kids who don't behave in class get put into that because they're not seen as, oh yeah, you're not going to uni. You can go to uni if you want, but an apprenticeship is just as good as uni. You get in, yes, uni is just like school in my opinion, but with the apprenticeship, you're getting hands-on and it's amazing. Just because you're not seeing, deemed as smart enough to go to uni don't block out an apprenticeship I never knew what an apprenticeship was I didn't even consider it I was like I don't know what I want to do but just go in with it but it needs to be advertised at a younger age of what the kids can do and that apprenticeships are out there and that they are just as good like you can't just say oh it's just an apprenticeship like, just put that to the side because it's not I'm in this for four years I'm getting taught 
everything and I'm going to be a qualified plasterer at the end of it so I may have my own apprentice at the end of it if I get kept on with the council it just needs to be shown that no matter what you can do it like this technology was my kind of downfall but with the craft side it was all there and I put my skill there Doing the multi-trade course, I was out, learned everything I needed to do, then get the apprenticeship. And people praise you for getting an apprenticeship, but if you get into uni, it seems better, but it's not. You're, I don't know how to... I want to promote the apprenticeship as much as possible because it is a great thing to have and not a lot of people know about it. And with the whole trade thing, people need to know what is out there. If you're a female, get into it. I can be a girly girl, do my nails, my makeup and all that, but at the same time, I'm happy to get dirty. Like plastering, you're always getting plaster all over you, plaster dust, everything. There's a shower there, go and have a shower after. It's easy as that. Um, it's just more females need to get into it. And I want more people to have the experience that I was given in my fifth and sixth year at school because it's not advertised enough and teachers don't know anything about it. Thank you. Keres, thank you very much for that very passionate uh, presentation and discussion around uh, your STEM journey and uh, raising some really important issues, I think, for, uh, for education. And, of course, there will be uh, teams here from Improving Gender Balance, uh, work that's going on here in Scotland uh, at both our, our STEM sessions, our, our expos. So, uh, picking up on those themes that you have introduced. Thank you very much for doing that. Now, um, in our remaining time, we have uh, some questions for the Minister, um, actually from our uh, three speakers who have consulted widely with colleagues and, um, and, and fellow students to uh, pose three questions I think we have time for. So I'm going to ask Mr Lockhead to come back up to the podium and I'm going to ask our, our um, other presenters here to ask those questions. So. We're going to, hopefully, this microphone is going to be on. <laughs> I've only been in the job for two weeks. Please be easy. <laughs> so be gentle, be gentle. Okay, I'm going to try the other microphone. Is this one on? We're just going, is that on? Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to start with Ruby, please. I was lucky to attend a school with excellent science resources. What can the Scottish Government do to ensure all schools across Scotland are equally well resourced to deliver an exciting practical science curriculum? Uh, thank you for the, the question, Ruby. Uh, well, clearly we have to ensure that our schools are well resourced if we are to promote STEM and make it an attractive subject for, for pupils to take up. Um, clearly, <coughs> we are doing our best to build new modern schools in Scotland and over 100, nearly 120 schools in the last few years have been either completely refurbished or uh, rebuilt, uh, new schools built. So we have to ensure, and I've seen some of those schools and they've got really good facilities, so we have to ensure that we uh, are able to supply these facilities in all schools across Scotland and that certain areas are not disadvantaged over other areas. In terms of the actual resources, um, clearly things are quite tight now nationally in terms of financial resources. So it's more important than ever before that we work with employers and we work with outside organisations so that they bring their resources in for pupils to be able to use for, for STEM subjects. We have some particular partnerships at national level. Um, the, the Wood Foundation, uh, sorry, Ian Woods Foundation, uh, clearly has got a partnership to promote science with the Scottish Government, so that's very important for us to encourage young people to take up learning of STEM subjects as well. So I think we just have to do all we can to work with external organisations and employers to make sure we can use their resources as well as the public resources we have within schools themselves. But of course we have to pay attention to that as well. I love STEM because of the encouragement, knowledge and enthusiasm of amazing teachers in both primary and secondary school. How will you make sure that the best STEM graduates want to be teachers to inspire more people like me? Well, I think listening to uh, 
all of your contributions when you were speaking just a few moments ago. Uh, you put a lot of emphasis on how uh, your teachers in particular inspired you to take an interest in STEM subjects and pursue a career or apprenticeships. Uh, and that just shows the importance uh, in terms of our teachers in our classrooms being inspirational and passionate, uh, as many are at the moment. So we just have to encourage more people. Uh, we have a number of initiatives in the strategy that I mentioned earlier on, the STEM strategy, to encourage professional development for STEM teachers, but also to encourage people to perhaps change careers. And I mentioned in my speech earlier on about the bursaries that are available for career changers to take up STEM learning. So <clears throat> it's not just about teachers, it's also about pupils. And I think your contributions today were very inspirational. And when we were talking earlier on again about young um, STEM leaders, I think you're perfect examples of young STEM leaders. So we have to have uh, pupils, peers, also inspiring them to get involved in STEM subjects as well. What are the government's plans to ensure teachers like Mrs. Kane know about foundation and modern apprenticeships so they can promote these in school? Um, well, again, Keris, hearing about your experience as apprentice uh, is very inspiring and, and particularly encouraging more women to take up apprenticeships. So well done on what you've achieved and come here today and speaking off the cuff about your experience. Uh, so the more schools we get you into, the better uh, across Scotland. Foundation apprenticeships are a really exciting initiative, so we do need all our schools in Scotland to learn more about them and to take up the opportunities. We have a target and we have to achieve that target. Uh, we are now having people coming forward taking up the foundation apprenticeships, but we need more across Scotland schools as well. And a lot of the inspiration for taking up those apprenticeships will come from teachers in the classroom and from the schools being enthusiastic about this option. Uh, clearly, the developing the young workforce, which is working across uh, local authorities, um, employers, and the schools and colleges, all working together, and they're prioritizing now foundation apprenticeships and, and all apprenticeships. So we need to have more of that joint working and bring people into the schools to talk about what the foundation apprenticeships about, have people who've been through apprenticeships talking to their peers about what it's all about as well, I think that will lead to a much bigger take-up of foundation apprenticeships. Okay, thank you.